Hi friends, I hope you all are loving the series, making the toys and having fun at home. So today's story is a very inspirational story. It is the story of our ex-president and who is called the Missile Man. Yes, it is about Abdul Kalam. So, I am going to narrate this story in a different way today. It is going to be as if Kalam sir is himself talking to you and telling you about his own life. So let's start. The Second World War was just over and India awaited her freedom eagerly. It was a time when the air was filled with the sound of indecent buzz of the radio. The whole country was filled with an unmatched optimism. I secretly wished for a chance to do something for my own country. For this, I needed to study in a good school. But I never dared to ask my parents as I knew they wouldn't be able to fulfill my wish. One day, my father came up to me and said, Abdul, I know how eagerly you are waiting to study in higher education. Your mother and I aren't highly educated, but we have great dreams for you. Don't worry, we will somehow find money and send you to good school. I was very excited. The visit school was in Ramanathpuram, a town that lay across the sea from Rameshwaram where I stayed. My brother took me to the school and I, I, I was admitted there. It was a very good school. When it would be hot and humid, the students were made to sit in the trees as there were no fans in those days. We would run around here and there when we used to switch classes. One day, when I was in a hurry, I stepped into the wrong class where my maths teacher was taking the class. He glared at me from his glasses and said, What are you doing in the school if you can't even find your own class? You must go back to your own village where you came from. I felt crushed. My family had made so many sacrifices to admit me into the school. I terribly felt homesick. But I decided from that day to be a best student in that school. I studied day and night. Many months later, my dream of scoring full marks in mathematics came true. The next morning during our assembly, the same teacher who had scolded me back then in the class stood up, smiled and said, Whoever I scold, become a great man. Everywhere in the assembly bursted out in laughing. I went back home. That semester was finished and my family was rejoiced. My mother made sweets and my father went all over Rameshwaram distributing them. I finally felt that I had done something worthy. But there was a long way ahead of me. Many a times when, I, when me and my friends sat in the banks of our village pond, while my friends practiced skimming pebbles over the rippling water, I would sit and watch the cranes and seagulls roaring in the sky. The sight of those birds inspired me and I dreamt of my future. As I grew older, my goal became clearer. To fulfill my dreams again, I had to go to a good college now. The Madras Institute of Technology, popularly known as MIT, was the best institute for technical studies in South India. I studied hard to win a scholarship again, which allowed me to study in such a well-known college. But it wasn't until the day I entered MIT that I saw my goal standing in just front of my eyes. 
The MIT campus boasted and was very proud of the two large aircrafts that were on display in the campus. I remember sitting beside them the whole time just looking at them and dreaming when all the other kids used to go back to hostels. I was fascinated by the details of the design and wanted someday to create such aircrafts as my final project of college. I was asked to design a fighter jet with a team of four others in my class. One day my teacher reviewed my progress and exclaimed, Abdul, I am not really fascinated and very disappointed with your plan. I have decided to give you a deadline. I offered several excuses but my teacher refused to listen. Sir, please give me at least a month. I'll surely come up with a better design, I pleaded. He looked at me and said, Look, young man, this is not school anymore. I'll give you just three days. On Monday morning, you fail to submit the design and your scholarship will be cancelled. I was speechless. The scholarship was my lifeline. Without it, I was helpless. I had no choice but to get up to working. That night I did not sleep. I kept toiling on the project. The next morning I just took a one hour break, ate a little food and went back right to work. On Sunday morning itself I had almost completed my task when I suddenly felt a presence behind my back. I turned around and discovered my teacher peeping into my drawings. After examining my work properly, he patted my back and said, I knew I was putting you under stress by asking you to meet this impossible deadline. I never had expected you to finish your work so early. I had hardly slept hardly eaten anything from past three days and was so exhausted, but I felt a sense of joy in my stomach and mind. Not only did I keep my scholarship, but I graduated from MIT with outstanding marks. I had already accomplished my goal to successfully design an aircraft and I was now drawing closer to my dream to fly one. It was so amazing thinking like I saw the seagulls in the sky in my childhood. I will be flying in the sky and then roaring on my own this time. This is such an inspirational story. Even in poverty and living away from parents in such a small age, he tried and achieved his dreams. He also said, I needed a small push every time, but he did not fee felt guilty or felt small to give this credit to his teachers, even being such a great person. After graduating, he joined the Aeronautical Development Establishment. He then became the member of the Defense Research and Development Services. He then was transferred to ISRO in 1969 and became the head of the country's foremost satellite launch vehicle, SLV-3. He also worked hard on a missile called Agni. He was a part of a number of projects, including Project Devil, which was then a foundation of Prithvi missile. He also had a lead role in carrying out Pokhran II, a nuclear test for India. He wrote lots of books and achieved lots of awards. A man who spent approximately five decades in public service that included one as our president. He owned no property, no TV, no fridge, AC, not even a car of his own. He approximately owned 2,500 books, six shirts, just a pair of shoes, a wristwatch, four trousers and only three suits. Can you imagine? 
a president of a country owning such small assets. This is such a great example of actually simple living and high thinking. I feel his life is a true inspiration to all of us. This was a great story. I loved the story. I hope you loved it too. And today, let's make a satellite. So today's toy is a very fun toy and very easy to make too. What do we need? We need two balls. One which is a bit bigger and one which is smaller in size. We need a thread to join both of them. What I've done is, I have taken two nails and attached the string to both of the nails. And then pierced this nail into the smaller ball which is a rubber ball and another nail into the foam ball. Like this. So that my system is ready. So now this is a system of sun and earth or earth and moon or you can also imagine this to be the earth and this to be the artificial satellite that we launch from earth. So now how this system actually works. When I am holding the big ball in my hand, uh, let's consider this to be the earth and this to be the moon. Now we will start rotating it. Be careful, don't hit anyone, okay? You can see that the smaller ball is rotating around the earth with the help of this string. So am I holding this ball? Not actually physically, but yes, I am holding it with this string. So the force that is acting on the smaller ball is called as the centripetal force. This force is acting because of the tension in this string. So, is there actually a string in between earth and moon? No, this is just a model. So, what is actually there between the earth and the moon or the sun and the earth or any planets and the moons that are rotating or are revolving around each other? What is that that makes them go on and on around each other? That is gravity. Yes, the same gravity that acts on you and me and everything around. Even if you jump or even if you throw something, gravity acts on that. So that is the same gravity which is acting in between the earth and the moon or earth and the planet uh, and the satellites that we have launched. So now if I make this string a bit loose. Please don't do this at home. If you do, be careful. Don't crash on something around you, okay? I think I can do this a little more carefully. I have made loose the nut and let's see what happens. See, when the string is detached, the ball flew away. So, the speed is also important. Why? If I lower down the speed, let's do it one more time. This is my speed where the ball is going around. If I lower down my speed, what is happening? The ball is falling on me or falling on the earth. So when we launch the satellite, we also need to keep in mind the speed of the satellite that is moving around the earth, which is very important. And why did this ball fly away? It is because the centrifugal force that is acting on it, which is not actually real, which is a pseudo force that is acting on the ball, which made the ball fly away. So did you understand what all is needed? The gravity pulls them together to keep them rotating or revolving around each other. And if the gravity suddenly disappears, they will be thrown away like the ball just did. And the speed, yes, the speed should be exactly the same or the speed should be accurate enough, high enough to keep it revolving around the earth. I hope you love today's toy and you enjoy playing with it. Now let's meet up next time for a new story. Bye!